Hi, it's Dr. Liz with the Hypnotize Me podcast. Today, we're talking to Stacy Horn, who's a certified hypnotist in Colorado. And she's going to tell us all about her hypnobirth and then her hypnobirthing training. And she also talks quite a bit about hypnosis for infertility or hypnosis for fertility, whichever way you want to look at that. It's a really interesting interview, and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. So I am here with Stacy Horn, who is a hypnotist in Colorado. She lives right outside of Vail and also a personal coach in that area. She has a private practice offering both of those services. And we're going to talk today about how she got into hypnosis and what she loves doing about it. And in particular, we're also going to talk about childbirth and hypnosis because she is certified in a couple of childbirth hypnosis specialties. Anne had a used hypnosis for her birth with her own daughter and also was born with hypnosis, her own mother. Let's jump in, Stacy. Good so, morning. Good morning. So let's talk about how you first got into hypnosis. Like, tell me how old you were. What was your first experience with it? As you said, I, I came into the world um, in 1963 uh, with... Um, the use of hypnosis. My mother had a doctor who was trained in Germany. And at that time, hypnosis was taught as part of the medical curriculum for many universities in Europe. And he taught herself hypnosis. And she used it for all three of, of her children. And so it was just always a part of my life. My mom used it. I didn't get into it until myself until 2000. The first time I used hypnosis for tobacco cessation. Mm -hmm. and So let me stop you for a minute. So was this part of your family stories when she would talk about your birth? Yes, yes. And she also continued to, you know, to use, tell us about our births, but she also modeled it. Um, she used it for any medical procedures or dental work that she ever had. Um, it was, she used TM as well, uh -huh. which was pretty popular back then. It was an adjunct for her. So for so, those of you who don't know, TM is Transcendental Meditation. It's a meditation yes. technique. So it was just always part of what we knew. But as I said, I it wasn't a part of something that I chose until I was ready to stop smoking. Okay. I, so did she teach you teach your kids to use it like did she try to or was it just more something that she did like mom does it, that yeah that it was more something that mom does yeah that my kids are the same way like yeah <laughs> my mom does that whatever you know every once in a while my my daughter will ask me if um who just turned nine if um i can use hypnosis for her for something mm -hmm. usually it's something kind of funny that you don't use hypnosis for but um I like the fact that she knows that's what I do. Yeah. What does she ask for? Um, gosh, I can't even think. Um, to help her to help her do better in tests oh. and doing her homework, which hypnosis actually can be used for. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is, she's she's not having a problem with either of those things oh. at this point. So <laughs> she just wants to be better. Just. To be better. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> just so to be cute. better. So I teach her breathing though. So mm -hmm. hopefully she'll use that for helping her focus when she needs to. Yeah, absolutely. So then you used it. You were a smoker. Yes. Okay. So the first time you really used it for yourself was in 2000 for smoking cessation. Yes. Then how did you become interested in doing it yourself? Um, actually, I got married in 2005. At that point, I was 41, I think. We got married and being older, it just didn't occur to me that pregnancy would happen. I kind of thought that <laughs> ship had sailed. Uh -huh. uh, so we were very surprised when um, Christmas two years later, or I was able to tell my husband a year and a half later that the baby was going to be our Christmas present. Awesome. What, what's and your daughter's name? It's Mariah. Mariah. And she yeah. was born in? December 14th of 2007. 
No way. So, my yeah. daughter is a December. Her birthday is December 14th. My uh-huh. own daughter. Yeah. <laughs> yes. How funny. It, may, it makes birthday parties and planning and Christmas a little. It does. It really does. Yes. Um, but she, mine is, was born in 2005. So she's about two okay. years behind yours. But okay. that is awesome. I love when a connection happens that way. Me too. Yeah, that is also Iyengar, BKS Iyengar, his, um, who's a huge yoga person. That's his birthday mm-hmm. as well. Oh, wow. So so you were pregnant with her as yeah. a surprise slash miracle baby? Yes. And um, I decided I was going to use hypnosis. So I thought that I would investigate hypnobirthing. And at that point, there was no one. This is a really rural mountain community. It's resort based. And so people are often kind of transient. Um, And the practitioner that I was seeking to do teach me hypnobirthing um, had had left the area. So I decided I was going to get trained for that. And I did. And I had I had an amazing birth experience as a result of using hypnosis. Mm -hmm. And I also had to use it for managing my pregnancy because I was 44 when Mm -hmm. I was pregnant, 44, 45, which I had to use hypnosis to eliminate a lot of the fears our our culture has about being an older mom Mm -hmm. that doctors have um, wanting to insist on C-sections and things like that, very medical. Mm -hmm. And that was not what I wanted. And I had to work with the hypnosis a whole lot for myself, just not to fall into that fear base and the negative thinking that many people had about, have about older moms. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the birth was exactly what I wanted. Can you describe the birth and like, did you immediately know you were in labor and then start the tools learned in hypnobirthing, or did it take you a while? Can you take me For through sure. some of that? Uh, no, it was actually, they be, partly because of the age, they kind of talked me into using Pitocin, which te- wasn't really what I wanted. But at that point, it was a concession that my husband and I decided to make. So the contractions were actually beginning to be more intense than, than I wished. Mm-hmm. I, so I went back to doing the deep breathing, doing my inward focus. And I imagined Mm -hmm. that I was deeply aware and connected to her as she moved down the birth canal and the contractions were, were manageable. I personally, and I've had women Mm -hmm. tell me I was lying, which, you know, if I were going to lie about something, this probably wouldn't be it. Um, but I did (laughs) not experience a, um, a painful birth. It was, she was, Mm -hmm. she was very small as well. She weighed five pounds, seven ounces, but she was, she was fully Mm -hmm. developed when she made her appearance into the world. She didn't even cry because there was nothing traumatic about it for her. And she just Mm -hmm. opened her eyes and was there. And it was interesting partly because it it was so much easier than I ever imagined for one. And Mm -hmm. they kind of whisked her away to double check because she didn't cry they thought something was wrong Mm -hmm. with her, which it wasn't. She just was very relaxed and very peaceful as, as was I. At one point, my blood pressure spiked during the the delivery process. Alarms are going off. And I kind of remember hearing my mom saying, oh, maybe you need to get the doctor. I just went back to focusing inside and let them do whatever they were going to do outside of me. And my husband was wonderful with wet, cold cloths on me. It was a very Mm -hmm. internal, very deep connection with Mariah. So it was... uh, So how how long was the birth? Four hours. hours. Four hours. Wow, that's fast. It was fast and it was easy. So And it was an induction. Yep. So you're in the hospital with an induction, and that that's really unusual yep. for an induction that it yep. goes so quickly. Right. So you really feel like hypnosis helped with that process. Like oh, absolutely! What one of the things that the medical model forgets sometimes is that our bodies were made to do this, and if we can get out of our own way and relax, that our bodies will do what they were made to do. It's our head that gets in the way. Um, I think. 
very often. Like I said, the fact that I used it to manage my pregnancy, my blood pressure until the very, that was the reason they did the induction was because um, of my blood pressure in that last couple of days. Oh, so your blood pressure yeah. was going yep. up some and they, they wanted to um, go ahead and yep. help the baby out. Yep. And uh, yeah, so I was able to use it in for all of those ways. So during the birth, were you using the breathing was it more, okay, I'm going to put myself into trance and just feel really connected to the baby? Were the CDs playing? Like, tell me about some of the it, practical it, stuff. No, it was, I just put myself into trance. And a couple times where I came up because of the, the alarms with my blood pressure, um, I just mm -hmm. decided that I wasn't really interested in what they were doing and allowed, did a couple more breaths and went right back into trance. Because it was, it was just so nice. It feels so nice. It does. I used yeah. hypnobirthing with my second birth. It did. It, it felt really yeah. nice yeah. to be in the trance. It felt like waves washing exactly. over me. And I would pop up as well at some points. I, I would sometimes pop up in a panic. I remember saying to my doula at one point, like, what if I can't do this? And she says, what if yeah. you can? Oh. <laughs> And I said, yes. okay. And I'd go right back down into trance for another yeah. couple hours. It's a, like I said, I, I, it was such an amazing experience for me that part of me thinks, why wouldn't women want to do that? Yes, absolutely. So I noticed on your profile, on your bio, sorry, on your website, stacyhorn.com, And I'm going to put that in the show notes for everybody. If you want to check her out that you're also certified in, is it hypno fertility? Yes. Um, I went, let's see, in 2009, I decided I was going to be trained fully for hypnosis. The people that I trained with, she's pretty much an internationally recognized, um, practitioner specializing in hypnosis for fertility. She actually, she actually did the oh. hypnosis for fertility that was used by hypnobirthing. She she developed that. Oh, interesting. And she's a baby whisperer. But so much of um, fertility issues are some of those, again, those negative beliefs that people have, I don't know, have implanted, have bought into when they've been told by doctors, oh, it's, it's unexplained infertility, and that's just the way it is. So much of the, again, the medical process of, oh, it's time I'm ovulating, you know, sex becomes, and making love with partners becomes less fun. It becomes very routine and very stressful. And the body just registers that as panic, I think. So the combination of changing those beliefs that, I mean, how many women have you known who thought they could never have a baby because they've gone through everything and were told it's just not going to happen and they decide to adopt or they decide to, you know, be childless, they relax and go, okay, that's just the way it is. And they you know, get pregnant. Yes. I know many, many women. I actually have a friend who was in a lawyer's office for an adoption and, um, and exploring that process. And he said to them as a couple, like, would anything prevent you from moving forward with this? And, she, and they laughed. She's really very, very funny. And she said, yeah, if I got pregnant with triplets, well, the next month she got pregnant with triplets naturally. <laughs> Like, no IVF, nothing. She got pregnant with triplets naturally. And and she really thought, like, she couldn't have kids. The, the, our belief systems are so powerful that um, hypnosis is one tool to kind of really unleash that. But when you have that kind of affirmation and strong belief of, unless I'd get pregnant with triplets, boom. You know, it's, it's just uh, amazing what we can do. Very interesting. So a lot of the hypnosis for fertility process is creating relaxation during lovemaking as a preventative really to that really stressful, like women describe that all the time, that when they're going through infertility and trying to have a baby, when they're trying and they're getting tense and it does become a task, they talk about that over and over. The partners become very stressed as well. Do you work with the partners as well, or is it mainly the women coming in? I you? work with both if both come in, um, helping 
the partner be aware of what's happening and what the suggestions are so they can hopefully reinforce some of those suggestions about relaxing, about enjoying the process of being connected, and that this is a way that we're allowing a baby to come in to our lives. Mm -hmm. Uh, One thing that also can interfere is past experiences, um, abortions, rapes, some of those Mm -hmm. traumatic experiences can really um, put some filters into women's minds about the possibility of having a baby. Yes. Yeah, definitely. That's true. Do you, is there research on that method in terms of their success rate? Oh, yeah, rate? there is. Lindsay Eastburn is the practitioner. She's got a lot of research attached to, I believe she's got it on her website with Eastburn Institute of Hypnosis. I believe that's what it is. She's got a book called hypnofertility, I think it is. I I can double check and confirm that with you. But um, Lindsay does have uh, research built, written into her book. And she's got pictures of the babies who've come along and stories of moms. She's had amazing success as well as the people that she's trained have been seeing successes for their clients for the nine years that I've known her. Mm. So you know her personally. Yeah, she's down in Denver. Uh, They've been great supports for me. And anytime I have a question about my practice, I can easily call them and they'll get back to me or offer suggestions. And they've Mm -hmm. got a little community. Very interesting. When do you recommend that someone seek out hypnosis for fertility? Like, do you recommend that they try for a while or they as soon as they want a baby? Like, what's your recommendation? I think that, that, oh. Um, The book I was mentioning is called It's Conceivable. It talks a lot about that anytime people are beginning the process of moving towards being ready to welcome a baby, whatever methods that they're doing, whether it's in vitro, whether it's acupuncture, whether it's massage, I think that getting their mind relaxed enough and in the proper place for welcoming a baby and allowing their body to do what it normally and naturally can do, I think it can start right at the beginning, just like anything else. And perhaps they won't have to go through all of the other um, procedures. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I will put the link to that book in the show notes. So you recommend that book. Any other recommendations for women um, considering conceiving or Perhaps they're already struggling with infertility and want to get some help with it. Yeah, I think just to ask questions um, when doctors are offering suggestions or making decisions that fertility may not happen for them is just to really question some of that. Is is that true? Is that what beliefs are, am I having about this process that may really interfere with my having the successful and amazing birth that I'm wishing for. Great suggestion. Do you find that some doctors are more open to hypnosis than others? I've I found that it's probably about 50-50. I live in a small community, so the specialists, the OBGYNs, about half of them are familiar and comfortable and a couple of them have actually used hypnosis for their own in their own lives. So I was really clear when I went in that that was what I was going to use my delivery, and they were really respectful of that. So I think just being clear, we have strayed a little bit away from the childbirth. <laughs> so, um, so you had the hypnobirth yourself. And you were trained in this method. Do you run classes in your practice or is it more individual that the women are coming in to see you? Like, how did that process work for you afterwards? I did do a couple of classes, but mostly I've worked individually with people. When people come to me, it's usually referred by someone else. Uh, I actually run into a couple of the my past clients out in the world here who are other professionals. So that's mm-hmm. always kind of fun. Absolutely. Like when I took the hypnobirthing class, it was uh, five classes. I think the last one was yeah. a party though. 
So <laughs> it's really yes. like four classes. So do you do a four session hypnobirthing package? Like, is that what it's like? Or is it more that you're co- they're coming in and they're doing some coaching work around that and addressing fears and then the hypnobirthing class? Yes, quote that is uh, that is how I've been doing it more. It's still probably five sessions when I've worked with people for those issues, but mm-hmm. just to make sure that initially I'm as clear as possible on what may be interfering and then build that into the hypnosis sessions to release. I, I love to do release pieces in hypnosis because whatever it is, it doesn't have to be a conscious belief that hypnosis can release unconscious beliefs that are interfering with people going forward. So that's usually the first session that I do is releasing anything and everything that may be interfering with obtaining the dreams that you have, whether that's to have this amazing baby and amazing birth or whether that's other habits or concerns that they have. Mm, Interesting. So you in that first session and and the subsequent, it sounds like it is actually a pretty custom. Yes, very customized. Mm. Is there an education piece that happens as well? Like I remember in my class watching films and quite a bit of education, actually. I I don't use the videos. I actually have supplemented my training with um, hypnosis for for birth, again, by, by Lindsay Eastburn. So I've not used videos. I talk through the process. I explain the process, you know, of, of how our bodies are designed and help people also develop their birth plans so everything can be exactly the way they imagine it to be, hopefully, as Mm -hmm. well as allowing them to make a plan together and connecting together on how they can deal with anything unusual that might occur or any suggestions that are coming to them from the medical staff as well, if they aren't using a doula or someone to support them. So there is a lot of Mm -hmm. education, answering questions during those sessions. Um, I find that people who have come to me for hypnosis in general uh, have usually tried lots of different ways of, um, obtaining their goals. And I find the same with fertility and, and birth that uh, people have tried all kinds of things, have researched on the internet usually, which is sometimes good and sometimes bad. Um, yes. <laughs> so sometimes it's, it's actually even cleaning up some of those beliefs that they found on the internet that aren't true and aren't accurate and do interfere with them having the birth that they want. Yes. Are there partners coming with them for the hypnobirthing or is it it just occasionally or usually? I I prefer the partners come. They can can actually sit there or experience the hypnosis as well if they'd like. Uh, Because I I Mm -hmm. really want it to be a connecting experience for them. Yes, absolutely. And I want them to understand what's happening, um, understand how to support their partner, be there for them and be there with them. So that just Mm -hmm. kind of makes it even more special, I think, than it already is. Absolutely. And how can their partners best support them during the birth? Like, what do you recommend? I often recommend them focusing the breath, reminding them to breathe when they have a panic, if they have a panic moment, um, as in, can I really do this? And doing some physical care, whether that's helping them find a position that's comfortable, whether it's rubbing their back, whether it's simply breathing with them, reminding them about um, hypnobirthing uses rainbow breathing and doing some of those mm-hmm. specific techniques. In the process of the sessions that we um, have, I have people talking when they go home about what what would you like this to be like? How can you support me? What do you need? So helping them to really connect and ask those questions that sometimes don't occur to people to ask each other at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Can you let people know what the rainbow, rainbow breathing, breathing is? Rainbow breathing is just a visualization that allows for relaxation. And you said it's just, it's a technique of imagining breath as colors to use in the relaxation process. Mm. I know that a really popular relaxation that comes with the Hino Birthing series yes. is the rainbow relaxation. Yes. My favorite was always Aaron Aldrich. 
like he his voice would come on i would listen to this um i don't know i listened to it for a couple of months actually every night while i while i fell asleep i think it would start with red and then orange and by orange i'd be out like yeah. i'd be completely asleep right yeah. which a lot I, of women I never talk finished about. the whole thing like, i just i don't know anyone well, ever who has if you finish the whole thing and you've, you're listening yes. to this, please email I'd like me. To know too. Let me know if you stayed awake. <laughs> well, and, the whole thing. and um, if I may, I one really cool thing is I've actually been listening to Stephen Halpern since 1987, and he actually did the music behind that CD. And yes. I am going to be interviewing him on my on my Deeper Connections podcast, and he's going to be, I think, the second or third guest that I have. I'm so excited because wow. I I believe hypnosis awesome. and sound healing are just two ways of helping us get deeper connections with ourselves. And the deeper connections is exactly what we've been talking about between partners in this birth process, being Absolutely. deeply connected with ourselves, being deeply connected with our, our babies, and being deeply connected with our partners in, in this amazing, miraculous event. Absolutely. That is really what you're looking you're working for for the couple or even if someone comes in as an individual for them is that deeper yes. connection during their birth yeah that's beautiful do you also do online consultations in case there's someone who doesn't have a practitioner in their area for hypnosis for a hypno birth or hypno yes i do do that work online have consults um i offer a three free 30 minute consultation to anyone because I think it's important you have a good connection with your practitioner as well. So. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much again for being here. I really enjoyed our conversation. Thanks for having me. What a wonderful interview with Stacey Horn. I really loved hearing about her hypnobirthing story and how her daughter was born, but I was also impressed with how she used hypnobirthing in her pregnancy to decrease anxiety and I hear that over and over again. You know, I taught prenatal yoga for well over 10 years and sold the company in 2016. It was a highly successful company. And I would always recommend hypnobirthing to the women. This was way before I was trained in hypnosis. And they would come back and report this. Like it really helped them decrease anxiety during their pregnancy. If you're interested in my prenatal yoga product, I do do training still. Actually, I do teacher trainings that I've done for years. So you can see that at iloveprenatalyoga.com. I also have a marketing product called Marketing from Your Mat from pre for prenatal yoga instructors about how to market your class for prenatal yoga. I think it's just so wonderful and it's such a great compliment to hypnobirthing and hypnosis during pregnancy. It also helps reduce anxiety and depression during pregnancy. So I did a study in like 2015, I think it was, where I surveyed 135 women who had taken the class, and it was a significant reduction in anxiety during their pregnancy and depression during their pregnancy, as well as after. This is the same thing with hypnobirthing, that it will decrease anxiety and depression before the birth, during the birth, absolutely, and after the birth. I know I've used it lifelong, and Stacey talks about the same thing. Anyone I know who've used, who has used hypnosis during pregnancy reports this, that it is a lifelong skill that you learn and then use the rest of your life for any kind of procedures that you go through. I still use a 4-8 breathing for any kind of medical procedures I go through even to this day. And it's like, uh, Eva's 11. So this is 11 years later, right? <laughs> it's crazy. 11 years later, but it's the truth. It's the absolute truth. Anyway, if you're interested in the marketing product, did I give you the website? I don't think I did. That's marketing from your mat.com. It's a marketing product for introverts because I am an introvert and I figured out an amazing system to market a prenatal yoga class from your home. The other reason I did that is because I had small kids at home when I was marketing and I couldn't do a whole lot of events. I didn't have a lot of support from my husband at the time. So I was like, well, I'm going to have to do this from home. So it's a whole system if you're interested in it. And the reason I say that is because the more that you can get women into your classes, the better. 
you get to share the love and the skills of prenatal yoga and help women during their pregnancies and during their births and after. So that's really a motivation for me to doing that product. All right, so I'm going to wrap up now, particularly because there's a long person in the back that has decided to start his day or her day. Pretty sure it's a guy, but um, have a wonderful week. If you like the episode, please rate and review it on iTunes for me. And I'm going to give you a tip here. If you're already subscribed to it on your iPhone, what you have to do is actually search for it again. I know this is counterintuitive, but I had an iPhone whiz show me this because I had no idea how to do it for like years. I had no idea. I'd have to go to my computer and search it again and find their review page. It was really a pain in the butt. So from your iPhone, if you're subscribed, you can search it again. And once you do that, you can click on the picture and then review it right from your phone. So I would really appreciate that. I read every single review. Want free hypnosis files or to learn more about Dr. Liz, her books, products, and services? Head over to drlizhypnosis.com to get in on all the great resources. If you liked this episode, do Dr. Liz a favor and rate, review, and subscribe over at iTunes. Or better yet, tell a friend about the podcast so we can continue to grow our amazing audience. Lastly, be sure to send in your feedback to Dr. Liz at drlizhypnosis.com. That's D-R-L-I-Z at drlizhypnosis.com. We love to hear from you.